Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Isha Alvarez and today we have another great interview. Today we have a professional artist as well as a professional dancer, Mr. Wade Hanson. Thank you. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to be here. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. Mr. Wade Hansen for coming to our old school Zumba interview. Thank you. We really appreciate your time. We know that your time is precious, especially around the holidays. And we're just grateful and thankful that you were able to join us today. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, then. So our very first question that we want to know here at old school Zumba is what or who inspired you into becoming not only a professional artist, but also a professional dancer right here in the fabulous Las Vegas and Bachata community? Well, it goes back to um, when I was in New York. Okay. And um, that's where I finished uh, grad school and visual arts school, that is, at School of Visual Arts. And then my, my friend of mine, uh, Ephraim, he said, um, we went out to a club. Shout out to him. Say his Ephraim, name a little bit slow. Ephraim Rosario. <laughs> Ephraim from York. Hi, New York in the house. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And we had, so we had um, we had seen these people dancing at this club in Times Square, and it was the first time seeing in person um, someone dancing salsa. Oh. And for me, for me, other than that, I'd seen it on television for a number of years. You know, con big con big stage concerts, um, big large events, and it didn't really appeal to me. I think it was something about seeing it on the screen. You mm -hmm. know, like it's like when you when you have. You know your favorite artist, yes. musician, or whomever, and you have their you have your their favorite album, and you're listening to it in your home. You have the best Dolby surround sound and everything, but it's totally different once you're right there, VIP, front row, front row stage. You know, watching them, watching them perform. So that was it was like that seeing this this couple, this, this guy and this girl that they were dancing and they're doing this partner work, and mm -hmm. I was just wondering like, what, what are they doing? Are they, are, they, are they like morphing? Are they like they're like transforming? Like what is happening? It was. And and the there was this atmosphere in the room and it was it wasn't fully dim but it was it was, it was this, this nice atmosphere and it was lit and then so it was like the silhouettes and they were like it's like they're going in and out I was like wow wow mesmerizing yeah, right yeah. and it was just like I, I couldn't compute it mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you know they, they were doing part of work and all of a sudden they just broke away into like this mm -hmm. footwork and so yeah. they were just like I was like wow that just like wow and every just things everything felt just so um, I didn't I couldn't explain it then but it. In hindsight, I was like, wow, that was very organic. You know, mm -hmm. it, it didn't it didn't seem so over the top. It didn't seem so, hey, it's about me or it's about this. They were just in their own groove, they're minding their own business, and they were just dancing like, wow. I was like, I was telling Ephraim, like, well, we we gotta we should, we gotta take some classes at some point. So I mean, time went by, and you know, months and months go by. And so, Wait, what year was this? This was uh, this was ninety. It was late nineties. It was ninety. Um, no, no, it was early. It was early in two thousand, I think. Oh, cool! So that was like twenty years ago. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Twenty plus years ago. Wow! And you're yeah. still out here killing the game today. <laughs> yeah. Look at you. I mean, I was <laughs> evolving, evolving. Right. Like one thing that I've, I've learned that um, with whatever craft or whatever endeavor, you know, it's no matter the more you learn, mm -hmm. you realize there's so much more. You just don't know, mm -hmm. and it makes you want to. At least for me, it makes me want to learn more. I still feel like, okay, I'm a beginner. Right. I need to refresh. There are times when when I can, when I'm more heavily involved with in visual art or with in dance, and then I need to. If I'm doing more art projects, then I'm, I'm not, maybe I'm not doing as much dance, or vice versa. Then I need to refresh. So, but right. yeah, it's, yeah, I always feel like, okay, I'm a, I'm a beginner, which is silly. People like laugh at me and say, like, no, stop it, stop it. But no, it's true. It's true when you get down to the, the meats and bones. Mm -hmm. When you think about when was that first sound, mm -hmm. who or what group of people, mm -hmm. you know, thought of making a bumba drum? Right. When was that first sound? When was that boom? Right. Where, where's that sound now? Somewhere outside of this galaxy. Right. So it's like when you think about that, it's like wow. The oh, growth. Man. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is like wow. This is infinite. You know, I'm, I'm just a, a, a very minuscule part within this world of this, this journey of dance. So. Absolutely. Oh, but yes. Thank you for that. That is so awesome. Yes. Definitely. It's so cool to see like how everyone started and where they came from. That's why I love doing these interviews because mm -hmm. I get right down to the meat and potatoes. So mm -hmm. it's it's amazing. Um, 
if I may. Uh, oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that, so that was with my friend um, Ephraim. So we eventually took some classes. We eventually took, um, we started with Eddie and Medio Torres. Mm -hmm. So the style of dance that I dance, it is, there are several ways you can term it. Mm -hmm. um, it's New York style, um, it's dancing on two, mm -hmm. um, it is salsa New York, or it is, as Eddie would term it when he was younger, um, New York nightclub style. New York nightclub style dance. Because that's when he was younger, that's where you would you could only see this particular dance mm -hmm. in New York. And where in New York? Only in the nightclubs. Those are his words. Not Got mine. it. Not mine. But, Got it. But yeah, so every, everyone like um, directly, I learned directly from Eddie and then those that I'm teaching today, such as tonight, they're learning indirectly from Eddie and Maria. So, um, but because yeah. you've been a student of his. Yes, yes. Got learning it. like Maria Torres holding my hand for my first basic step and said, no, 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 you're doing this wrong. No, you're doing this <laughs> wrong. And then she, after lesson two, she's like, okay, go to level two. So then Eddie teach me about the cross body lead, you know, the basic spins, you know, all the footwork, just your timing, footwork, and rhythm. And that definitely matters. Because the guy has to know what he's doing in order to lead. Yes. And the dance is for the woman. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, both. Both. Yeah. Both. I have this this phrase, which gets people laughing sometimes, but it's so true. It's like, you know, for, for leaders or followers, at any at some point when you're on the dance floor, you're going to be dancing with a drunk driver. Sometimes <laughs> it's going to be two drunk drivers with two steering wheels going left and right. And sometimes, you know, it's, it's both of you in sync. Right. You know, it can be where either you're both beginners or even as professional, maybe you just don't gel. Mm -hmm. Or maybe a professional gels with a beginner. So it it it, it goes that's just part of the adventure. It's oh part absolutely. Of the adventure. Absolutely. But, but um but yeah, sort of fast forwarding it to, you know, how I landed here in Vegas or what drove me to or what awakened me to Vegas was yes. uh, another uh, good friend of mine, Giovanni de Simone. Mm -hmm. Um Shout out. A, yes, Shout out. Giovanni de Simone. Yes, he was um we actually we actually crossed paths when I was performing at a um, at a salsa event like a while back in New York. It was a social, you know, um, the music and the performances and everything. Right. And then I think he'd been watching me for a moment. He's like, you know, he's observant of you know all the dancers and their styles and their personalities and how people behave and stuff. And so he said, like, you have a really unique style. Have you ever thought about branding yourself? Mm, yeah. So we eventually got to collaborate and started doing some projects at different clubs and stuff. And what it, it entailed, like my, you know visual art display, like an, an art gallery, and then mm -hmm. a local dance performance. And then after a certain point, he was like, have you ever thought about Cirque du Soleil? Cirque du Soleil, yes. Yes, he's like, Cirque du Soleil, what's, 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 I think I've heard of them, what's that? So yeah, was, they're amazing here. Yes, yes, and so he was saying, um, that's your, your style, of course, it's, it's your, your mambo based. Um, oh yeah, I wanted to sort of backtrack. Um, people might refer to this dance as mambo. Mambo, okay. M-A-M-B-O. Mm -hmm. And in, in real short, quick history terms, mambo was basically, it was an exiting music that, mm -hmm. that was um, best pioneered by Arsenio Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. And he used to play this music called Dan Sol, which was a very slow, melodic music. And at the end of the, of the Dan Sol, he would say mambo, mm -hmm. and they would pick up, the, the tempo would pick up. Mm, so, yeah. But also mambo is partially derived from mumbo, M-U-M-B-O, which means a Haitian Indian priestess. So, but yes, yeah, so, so fast forward back to now, so that I just want to mention, you know, people might say, like I might say mambo, you might hear mambo, mm -hmm. and they usually um, refer to it as um, that New York style or that palladium, um, palladium style from New York. Right. So, um, but, but yes, so my friend uh, Giovanni, getting back to him, he was saying, have you ever thought about uh, Cirque du Soleil? Mm -hmm. What's that? Where is that? It's like, that's in Las Vegas. It's, it's an unbelievable, it's top tier, you know, um, stage performance. And so... I was like, is that salsa? No, it's not salsa, but it, it is, you have to go see their, their performances and you just have to go there. So I took a trip to Vegas back and it was, it was old, fall of 09. Okay. And just a visit. Right. And I participated in a Cirque du Soleil workshop at the Rock Center for Dance. Oh, cool. And there I met uh, Sandra Merley. Mm -hmm. uh, she lives here. She's married, has a kid. She performed Cirque du Soleil. Mm -hmm. And so, hello, Sandra. <laughs> Shout out to Sandra. Yes, and so she was, um, we, we met and we connected, and I remember our instructor that day was Giuliano, mm -hmm. and, um, but yeah, so fast forward, those are, as, I'm, as this all sort of coming into place, these are some of the friends that I ran across, oh, and absolutely. so, so eventually, like, within the next year, I, um, I left New York, and I moved back to, I was temporarily back in, in the South, mm -hmm. and then followed in, in Arkansas, and then, um, I, the next year, I moved to 
Las Vegas. And so I, you know, I had very little, actually I did have some elder family, I still do here, but not much family, but as far as like work and endeavors and creation, mm -hmm. that was like, I was coming in cold turkey. So, mm -hmm. um, but my thing was, I remember there was a point when I was, gosh, part of just my creation and part of just my endeavors, I was actually, I spent a little bit of time actually, I was one of the portrait artists sketching in front of Bellagio. Oh, cool. It was the summer of, I think it was the summer of 2011. And we're surrounded by your artwork here. So of course, there's gonna be another video with Wade Hampton definitely detailing each of his pieces from his artwork. So make be sure you stay tuned and check out our next video after this. Yes, and so I just remember sketching, doing, doing my little portrait sketches in front of the Bellagio, setting up and everything, and people started, I just wanted to go out there and just like sketch, I wanted to be outside, and people like started asking me, how much do you charge? I was like, hmm? It's like, so I mean, eventually after so many people started asking me, I was starting to I started, I charge this amount, so. Right. But all the while, I would, I would stand there and I would just look, you know, up at the Bellagio, it's like, how do I get in there? Who do I, who do I talk to? It's like, I didn't know anyone. It's like, do I just walk up into the hotel right now? It's like, no, that would, I, I don't know who, who would I speak right, to. Right, you can't actually or, do that. No, no, yeah, true, true. <laughs> and so, um, sort of quickly moving through, um, it was, there was a salsa event at, um, it was, it was a Tuesday night, mm -hmm. right, in 2011, I met, um, I ran into a lady, her name is Amaris Fuller. She still lives here. Shout out to her. Amaris. And uh, so that was at, um, they had a salsa night Tuesday night at Vince Neal's, I forgot the name of the place, but the rock star, he owned the place. It was Tuesday nights and it was a salsa, it was Latin night. And so I, I ran into her and then I also ran into a girl named Jamie Jones, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I believe they're both still living here. And so um, Amaris had mentioned some other events. Uh, I eventually did the Breaking Boundaries event at UNLV, but with Jamie, um, I eventually ran into her again at uh, Samba Latte, which is owned by Luis Oliveira. Mm -hmm. Okay, shout out, hello Luis. And so that was actually, that coffee shop was referred to me by Giovanni. Mm. And so I started um, collaborating with Luis and they had purchased several of my pieces which are hanging in the coffee shop, Samba Latte in Boulder Park. Absolutely, uh, say that place again so that way everyone will know where to find your artwork. Samba Latte in Boulder Park, the owner is Luis Oliveira. Mm -hmm. Check him out. Yes. And so um, I was, I ran into Jamie again there. Mm -hmm. uh, the same, the same lady from, that I ran into at Vince Neal's. We actually danced a few songs that night. But, and then so she started mentioning um, an event. There was a few other events. And then she started mentioning um, her friend of hers who danced with Cirque du Soleil. Oh, cool. Um, owns this gallery space. Mm -hmm. So um, I met with her. Um, I think it was like a week or two, a few weeks later. And her name is Wasa Kulabale. Shout Hello. Out. <laughs> Hello. And I remember we met at this one vegan, vegetarian uh, place on Sahara. Yes. And so she was, um, she was, she just wanted to see my artwork. So I opened up my iPad and then I was scrolling through my website and she was like, she saw some of the other videos. She was like, oh, you're a dancer. <laughs> she was with, with her accent. She was, she's yeah. from Senegal. She's, she's from, she's Senegal. from, uh, she's from uh, Dakar. I said, <laughs> um, but yes. Shout out to her. So I, I did a press play on the videos. I was like, wow, you're, you're amazing dancing. You dance salsa. Like, yes. So the visual art, it's, it's interesting because the, what was, what had me in school in New York was the visual art. And then I eventually got into more seriously involved into dance mm -hmm. in, in a casual sense. Um, and that was, um, that's where it started with my classes with um, salsa. Right. I started teaching a little bit, but mostly performing. And then fast forward to that now we're here in Vegas, and then I um, showcased more artwork um, that led to the vision, that led to the performing arts. And so Wasa, she was um, she was managing this um, Bob on Stage Theater um, in Town Square. It was actually at one location, at one storefront, uh, the Roundabout on the northwest side of Town Square. Okay. There was a Roundabout, and there there was a theater. There was a theater there, a large theater there. And she was at the corner, mm -hmm. uh, right behind the um, guitar center, okay. on the other side, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, I know exactly where that is. Yes, and so uh, I met, we met there, um, started hanging out with work, and she was mentioned in the show Red Dress. For several years, Red Dress, uh, it was a show called Red Dress, which was mm -hmm. partially based on her life. Right. We actually put that, that play on like every Sunday. Wow. So I was actually working in the theater, working. Wow, congratulations. Um, yes, it was a lot of work, a lot of work. You are definitely like, a pivotal like point and center here and it's like a staple here in Las Vegas 
within the performing arts community, not only the salsa and bachata community, but just interviewing you, the performing arts community here as well. Congratulations to you. Thank you. You, you, you I mean, you, me, myself, and, and you as, as anyone, we go through these motions and we don't realize, you know, what, how we're connected with so right. many people. Right, all you've and done. And you, wow. I, feel like, oh, I still feel like, okay, I'm, I'm still trying to do this little thing, this little thing, but when you look back, Right. It's like I'm, I'm naming these names like wow. Because it's like you have that breadth of experience. It's not only just you just getting here, like you have planted all these seeds and have all these experiences with all these different productions and like uh, these networks. So absolutely. Yes. Kudos to you. Yes. That's amazing. It's funny as we're going through this interview, I'm just reliving and thinking about like that's wow, amazing is that? so it, yeah yes and so with uh with Waso, so we were um, working on the play red dress for a little while and of course she's at the time she was um she was one of the, the primary uh, dancers uh, for the zumanity production mm, zumanity. You know, i've Hampton seen Hotel. that before as well yes. they have one here yes. in las vegas on the strip i've seen that performance zumanity yes so she they was have a version of it i think it's a smaller version of the bigger production that they have in new york Okay. I'm not mistaken, but yeah, I've seen that here. Well, that was, um, that's the Zemanity production at the New York, New York Hotel. Yes. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So she would, she was um, with Cirque du Soleil at that point. Mm -hmm. And then, so, of course, we were putting on the play, we were working on stage. So we were doing multiple parts within, this, within the theater, you know, as, mm -hmm. you know, especially, you know, backstage. You right. Know? On stage is like only a third of it. What happens backstage is like two thirds. That's like the real show. Because oh, absolutely. So many things. It's like <laughs> you have to have, wear so many hats. And so there's a part, I think it, was, it, it must have been the part where, you know, I'll play, you know, um, there was some small speaking roles. There were just like um, uh, background roles and there were like dance parts, right. obviously. And so there were once, there was one day, dance segment after so many Sundays, you know, she would bring in, she'd invite people from Search of Slave, people that were coming into town from all over the world. And then at some point, she had, Watts had approached me. It's like, you know, such and such was asking, you know, who is that dancer? Right. And at that point, they were, um, it was building up to the next year's uh, production for the One Night for One Drop, mm -hmm. which is Cirque du Soleil's collaboration with the One Drop, the global uh, organization One Drop, where they, um, it's, a, it's a fundraiser mm -hmm. um, to promote, to raise money and promote uh, water in needed areas around the world. Oh. So it's called um, One Night for One Drop. You know, mm -hmm. it's brought to, brought to you by the One Drop organization and Cirque du Soleil, and so that that season was coming up. So um, this lady inquired, and Watts had approached me, and I was like, oh, "Sure, <laughs> would you like to perform on, on this? On, would you like to perform on the stage?" That oh yeah, it's it's a very big it's a big dance it's a big thing. So I was like, "Sure, sure." So that led to uh, I, I met a, quite a few other dancers that were you know in various sort of productions and. Um, it was 2013, spring of 2013, March of 2013. And so, yeah, we were meeting at the old theater in, in the Bellagio Hotel. So I was like, wow, this is exciting. It, and I sort of go back and I rewind back to like, wow, it just wasn't, it was just like a few years ago where I was like, I was literally standing there sketching in front of Bellagio. I hadn't even started accepting any, any, um, anything for like people doing like for commissions and stuff or drawings and stuff. But it was, I was just wondering like, wow, how do I get up in there? Right. And lo and behold, one thing led to another. And so I'm like now, and then I'm like, you were you were in there performing, walking that. there, went through my warm ups. You know, people greet me. It's like because they, you know, after a while you go in there, they know who you are. So I'm like right this way. And so I'm going to the backstage, start stretching, warm up, and now all of a sudden we're on the that rubberized sort of lifting the you know stage floor of the old theater. So that was, yeah, that was so to sort of kind of recap it. Yeah, back you know going back to New York, uh, my friend Giovanni. He's we've done a saw me dancing. We did quite a few projects together, and so obviously my not just within dance performance, but my the work that I showcase is very so he's like, have you ever thought about Cirque du Soleil? So eventually made it down here, eventually went into Wassa, performed on the Cirque stage, and I continued doing um, work with the Red Dress production. And just kind of progressing each year yes. with a lot and of different products, yes. projects, excuse me, and yes. networking. Awesome. So now that you are a staple here, and not only the performing arts community here in Las Vegas, but the Las Vegas Salsa and Bachata community, what would you say in your professional opinion, as not only a professional artist and a professional dancer, what would you say 
are some skills or attributes that a person needs in order to be successful here in Las Vegas? Wow. I mean, first and foremost, bottom line, you have to be a people person. People person. People person. Yes. Yeah, and it, it, it's, it's, so, it's so crazy because um, obviously when I was much younger, you know, um, preschool, elementary, intermediate, high school, and college, and even so with, you know, in, in grad school, I was the quiet, there's a quiet boy, he's a, he's a quiet type. You know, why are you so shy? Why are you so this? And, and, and to, even to this day, I, I still like my whatever downtime that I can, within this world where everything is on, mm -hmm. you know, we have smartwatches, smartphones, mm -hmm. so I'm sure, sure we have smart caps, we probably have smart socks and everything. Everything always is Always on display. <laughs> it's like, everything is on, like, I still want, I still cherish and try and find my downtime, my peace time, my away time. Right. But yes, such as, yeah, it, you have to hear, you have to be a people person. If you don't want to, you, at some point, and it, but if, if you enjoy what you're doing, or if you can't explain why, why, in this case for me, it's like, I'm always asking like, okay, why do I, you know, what, what am I gonna do next? Why do I, why do I enjoy this part? Why do I enjoy this dance? You know, what's the next thing? And there's something innately where I just, I just can't help, I just keep doing it. And yes, part of it involves being around people. It's, it's like, you know, there is communication. It's, it's like water. We have to look. We have to see. We have to shake hands with people. We have to give hugs to people. We have to, we have, we have, to have engagements and, and sit down and, and break bread with people. Absolutely. And so it's an important, unbelievably important part here in Las Vegas to, if, if you're, once again, if you're not a people person, just, just with any endeavor, you know, just when I first started putting that, that, that paintbrush on the canvas, or when I put my first, my step on the dance floor, it's like, it's, it just takes practice. You, you know, and, and it'll eventually, once you're around, once you start to allow, wow, this is cool, wow, that person's cool, this group, this event was cool, mm -hmm. and you want to go back more and more. And at times you, you may have to, at times we all just want to like, ah, I don't want to go, I gotta go this event, but it, it's, there's always, there's always something rewarding. There's, Think about this. There, there is there are those who are unable to do so. Absolutely. There are those who are mentally the less fortunate. Yes. Who are unable to do so. Yes. And, and also there are those who, if you don't go to this event or if you don't go to that event, someone else will. Exactly. <laughs> someone else will be more than happy to. I'll exactly. take your seat. <laughs> exactly. But, but there is, I mean, such such as such as this this. I mean, this. I feel like it's it's. It's more like we're just hanging out. Like it's a conversation. It's like this is so. Because this is about you, yes, it, Wade. It's about you shining. It's a spotlight on you. This is your time now. Yeah, to I mean, shine. And so I mean, gosh, this this interview. I don't know. I don't want to. Technically, it is, but it, it just feels so at home. Right. And this is so much more rewarding than than just crossing paths and saying hello or eventually seeing. You know, I'm some glad of the to hear that. that. Yeah, no, no seriously. You're part of the family. You're part of my family. Yes. You yeah. know. Mm -hmm. My extended family, true. the old school Zumba family. True, true, true. But yes, um, you you have to get out and go to whatever events. Um, I mean, it, first and foremost, I mean, things are people like tangibility. Mm -hmm. So as much as one may be doing online or as you know on whatever platforms, at some point people want to see. They want to use all their senses and, and mm -hmm. they want to see, you know, touch, feel. They want to. You know, taste. You know, what is this person about? You know, right, so. and be a part of it all. Yes. So, would you agree that you have to like follow your passion, whatever you, it is you're passionate about? Then it won't feel like work. That's very, why I do what true. I do because you got to do what you're passionate about and follow your dreams, and then it'll lead you to those things that you, you know, ultimately love doing and stay doing to make yourself happy. So true. I mean, where where is your pulse? Your purpose. Yes. You know? What, what's what's your what's your verse? Right. You know, um, where, where's what's your journey in life? Absolutely. You know, so yes, that is yes. We're all doing things at any point. You know, everyone or most have we've all had to balance. You know, some of us we have we have just been graced within what we love to do. Mm -hmm. Others we've had to balance it with you know keeping the lights on with things that we don't want to do, and then you know working late night or getting up early in the morning. Right. And basically just grinding, just hustling. Right. Um, but yeah, where, what is the pulse? What's 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 what keeps you going? Where, where's that blood? You know, what's that flow? So definitely, um, if it's not there, be around people who are more enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. And but yeah, it's it's so love what you do and everything else.
else will come to play. Okay, so our next question for you is, because you, you've been awesome this interview and answered pretty much all of the questions I was going to ask you, which is awesome. So I just have a couple more questions for you, Wade Hampton. So my next question for you is, what is your one go-to technique that you use to display your creative side, whether it be through dancing or either through your artwork? What do you, what would you say is your one go-to technique that you can like say, you know what? That's my staple. That is what I do. That's my go-to song or that's my go-to technique mm -hmm. for my artwork. Well, with, um, I'll, I'll briefly go through both, if that's okay. Yes, oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's your interview. Okay. okay. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, um, well, with, 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 with dance, with salsa, with mambo, um, my, my birthing within this particular genre of dance is, is New York style. Okay. So I'm, 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 the, the blood is there, the pulse is there with, with mambo. So I want to hear classic mambo and cha-cha from yes. the, the late 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, yes. and early 80s. Now, do you request that from the DJs? You gotta go to the DJ and be like, play this song. <laughs> well, I, I, I think you know. <laughs> well, the, the, the DJs, they're they're artists, and, they're artists themselves. Absolutely. Yes, when they when are. if as and when I'm in certain environments where it's you know where it's conducive and and I'm familiar and I, and I know the DJ, I know the organizer, or I, or I know the, the, or the, the band, host or hostess, live band or then band. there may be a a a, a request. But but they're within their own spaces. They, Absolutely. They they spend all their times or enough time in the studio that week that week. Absolutely. And getting that playlist together. And get I know together. that's right. Yeah. So um, <laughs> and then for those that that are aware of you know what type of dance that I do, you know they're like okay there there is waiter there's such and such let me play a little bit more of this music let me play mm -hmm. some this better let me play some great better let me play some yes. early you know, one day so um, but, but yes so th there are times where like my my friends will nudge me it's like. <laughs> so, so it, yeah, it, 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 it depends, you know, it, it just depends. Um, but yeah, so that is, that's really what will get me, you know, I, I, I kind of, in some ways it's joking and not, but it's like that, that will make me a happy camper when I'm out in an event. And, and so but it's, it's, um, but even at these events, you're, you're getting a breath of, you know, everyone's or most people's genre of uh, music. And so you Get to explore and see the personalities within their their favorite genre, but yeah, that's that, that New York mambo, that 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 cha cha, that that, that, that gets me going. That, that, that's where that's where you, I'll 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 start dancing. I was like, wow, I did that, I did this. That's what makes me happy. So that's that's home for you. Yeah, yeah, that's home yeah, for you. yeah. And got it. With the the visual arts, um, uh, the portraiture, mm -hmm. as as we can see behind us on, on our on our on the outside, uh, the Yes, such as these pieces here, uh, portraiture, representational um, painting, uh, oil paints. Oil paints. Okay. And so the my I call them my core four mm -hmm. <laughs> of painters that I mean there there is a whole list. Uh, these are these, these are painters that have passed on that are you know their works or they were gosh their careers were happening you know four or five six hundred years ago. Yeah. So it goes through several periods of artwork and of course I have influences and, and peers today, mm -hmm. but. Um, the, my core four, there's John Singer Sargent, mm -hmm. there's Edgar Degas, there's uh, Rembrandt. And Rembrandt, there, I remember that one from yes. art class. <laughs> yes, yes, and there's uh, Diego Velasquez. Okay. And so each, each have their core strengths. Um, the uh, Rembrandt, his, his volume, his atmospheric um, sculptural of, of these paintings. Uh, Degas, his, his drawings and his compositional work, the so way he framed things, mm -hmm. as, as they all did. Um, uh, John Singer Sargent, who is during his time, during his heyday, he was, you know, his bravura of, of painting of society portraits, you know, um, of, of this society, of the socialites of that day. And, but just, yes, it was of a certain subject matter and a certain culture, but just his, um, his technique and his, his draftsmanship, you know, when someone says, you know, which I, you know, someone says, wow, you have, as, as, a, as a painter, as a drawer, wow, you have your very strong draftsman, it's like, you're solid in your foundation. Right. So, that's, so that goes back to like dance, you're solid, you're strong in your foundation mm -hmm. of drawing, color, composition, design. Mm -hmm. And Diego Velasquez, he's very, no, he's actually John Cena Sargent, who was taught by, he was, he actually was influenced by Diego uh, Velasquez. Okay. So when he was actually, um, when he was actually uh, 
going to schools and, and so forth. So those four, plus there are a number of others, but just to keep it simple, those four. Those four. And so four. as far as my influences, and obviously my work is primarily known for it, is, um, for my portraiture, mm -hmm. uh, my, my oil portraiture. Which are these drawings. pieces right here, and yes. they will be uh, displayed here in the next video. So be sure you stay tuned for the next video after this interview. Yes, and I was gonna, yes, so, and, and the piece behind me, which I will uh, delve more into. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so we're almost done here. We just have one final question for you. What would you say is the most rewarding part of being not only a professional artist, but a professional dancer within the Las Vegas salsa and bachata community? So what would you like to leave us here with if you have any special parting words um, I would I would say it's you know it just so happens to be that you know I appear to be a dancer. It so happens to be that I appear to be a visual artist. Um, the most rewarding thing is I mean it honestly um, meeting people such as you, uh, meeting my friends who I've met over the years here, um, Gonzalo, Conforti. Oh yes, and uh, gosh. <laughs> Be the hermano, hermanito, Randy Vargas. He's, yes, Randy I, I, Vargas. Hi, Randy. Yes, yes. I, I, he's, yeah, we, we actually met in New York. We actually were doing rehearsals. Um, I was I was performing with, with um, I was rehearsing with, with my friend Morgan, Ajay, Frank Diaz, and a few others, and Randy was, was performing with Carisma, and we actually met at a studio. We actually were, we were supposed to be doing this collaboration. Um, we were on the Upper West Side at 104 in Broadway, mm -hmm. and so that's where I met Randy. Of course, we would see each other at, at the Santo Rico Social, uh, at Flamingo, at all these spots. And then when I moved here, I went to Firefly on Tuesday nights on Paradise. Right. And he, he's like, oye, oye. <laughs> he's like, what, what, what? So it's just like yeah, a I, reunion. I didn't, know. I, did, I, I did not know. But but I, I sort of say that, um, just, I say that in the sense that, yeah, I, the people that I mean, gosh, it's just, so what? I'm a, I've danced, so what? That I am a pain in butt, but yet those, for what I, I love to do, I've made these connections with, with people who, you know, these, these relationships are just priceless. Right. And so the relationships with good people. Yes, un unbelievably. And I know. I mean, obviously, it, it can sound, you know, sort of. Yeah, it sounds sort of. <laughs> in a way, I don't want to say I guess cliche, but uh, but seriously, when, when once again, it's just being fortunate to cross people, um, cross paths with people that you know that share this this passion for living. Mm -hmm. That that you know, I'm thankful to. Boy, gosh, even right now with the classes that I'm teaching at Dance Now LV with uh, Sebastian and, and Natalia. Gosh, I mean. I, Shout out to Dance Now. Yes, Dance Now LV. Yes, with, um, with those. They'll be in our upcoming interviews. Yes, so <laughs> it's, gosh, it's just. Um, those it's a lot of great people here, not only yes. in this community, but a lot of great connects. And like you Absolutely. said, yeah. you probably uh, have been with, you know, some of the people that are now here back in New York, but it's so great to see them. It's like a little mini reunion. And not only that, you're able to work with them as well on projects here. Yes, and, and I, my, my head is like like rumbling through because I was like, there's so many people that I can think of, but, but I'm really gonna have so much time. But yeah. And you gotta tell everybody, forgive you if you don't say their name in this interview. Yes, yes, please, please <laughs> forgive me if, if I don't, but everyone that I have crossed paths with and have it, worked with professionally. Yes. yes, visual art, dance. Yes, uh, all of you have, have made a, whether, whether it's been positive or even at times maybe negative, it's, it's all made, had a huge part in how I've been shaped and how, I'm, how we're here today. You know? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Well, Mr. Wade Hansen, we want to thank you here at Old School Zumba you, for Mr. taking the time out to have this amazing interview with us. Everybody, make sure you check out Mr. Wade Hampton. We're going to leave you his info below and all of his social media. Do you want to go ahead and say the social media and yes. everything for us? Yes, I'll just leave it simple. Uh, WadeHampton.com. W-A-D-E-H-A-M-P-T-O-N.com. From there, you can scroll the site. You can see the visual artwork, the dance, and some of the other endeavors. And then as you scroll to the bottom, you'll see some of these social networks that Isha was mentioning. But yes, Absolutely. WadeHampton.com. Absolutely. Everybody, make sure you check out part two of this video. 
We're gonna dive into his amazing artwork that is displayed behind us. Check out any of our other old school Zumba interviews below. And we wanna thank you for your time and we love you guys. Take care, love everybody. Thank you. Adios.